All right, folks, I know I'm super late to the party on this, but I couldn't pass up an opportunity to talk about this because I feel like this right here that we're going to address, it really just encapsulates everything that's wrong with liberals who worship the Democratic Party, who are sycophants to the Democratic Party and think that they can do no wrong ever, regardless of how wrong they are, assuming you actually do believe the things you purport to believe. So Marcos Melitzas, who is the founder of the Daily Coast, who once delivered thousands of roses to Nancy Pelosi, something that he should be made fun of for the rest of his life for, he was commenting on the DNC convention, and he said something that should worry anyone who actually cares about consistency. He tweeted this out. I'm all about rubbing it in GOP's face that our nominee actually goes to church. Ours is now objectively the party of faith, family values, and national defense. Let's read that last part again. Our nominee is objectively the party of faith, family values, and national defense. Who do you think this is going to appeal to? How many evangelical Christian Republicans do you think are going to come over to our side, our side, because of this? Because Joe Biden is more religious than Donald Trump? Who cares? Why do you care about this? First and foremost, understand that there's bigotry that's inherent with this tweet because you're basically taking this position that it is inherently good to be religious. Therefore, people who don't have a religion, people who are atheist or anti-theist or agnostic, they're uh, worse. They're not as good as people who are religious. So understand that that's a right-wing position to take. Uh, but second of all, he is happy about the prospect of our side embracing what the Republican Party had embraced. National defense. Okay, that should be a given for any party, but we know the uh, implications of what he's saying here. We're the party who's going to more responsibly steer the U.S. empire in the direction that we wanted to go. Uh, family values. I don't know if he realizes this, but family values has very sexist and homophobic implications. When we're saying family values, we mean the nuclear family. We mean a family where there is a man and a woman, not two men. So when Republicans said, oh, you know, we're the party of family values, they are excluding gay families out, right? They're even ex excluding the prospect of women, you know, subverting their traditional gender roles and getting jobs outside of the family. Like, this is a traditional thing that Republicans promoted, but now you're saying, no, we're the party of family values. So, I mean, I just don't understand what you want here. What, what are you trying to get out of a tweet like this? Like, do you want Democrats to just straight up become evangelicals and start openly courting evangelicals to own Donald Trump because orange man bad? Like, what do you want out of this? We get it. Donald Trump says he's religious, but he's a hypocrite. We all know that he's never read the Bible. But guess what? Evangelicals still love Donald Trump. They still love Donald Trump because he delivers what they want the most. Policy. Abortion. So you know what? It doesn't matter that he's had 15 affairs on his three wives. I'm, you know, uh, spitballing here. But I mean, they don't care about the hypocrisy because whenever a religious person s sees something that they view as immoral, they just chalk it up to, well, nobody's perfect and uh, God forgives. So they explain it away very easily. So I don't understand from a strategic standpoint, what he expects to get out of this. Like, if you truly want to take all of the Republican Party's base, like, you can do that by just, like, openly embracing conservatism. Like, what's next? Would you be laughing if uh, Joe Biden came out against abortion because we're owning Republicans and we are, um, you know, we're eating into that evangelical base? Like, what do you want out of this? This is why people hate Democrats. You understand that, right, Marcos? This is why people don't respect the party, because you stand for nothing. You're able to adjust where you are on that political spectrum, depending on whether or not it's politically expedient. There's no, like, adherence to core principles or values in spite of how much we hear the word values. Like, there's nothing. 
We're a Big Ten party, according to you and Democrats, and that's a good thing. It should be celebrated. Except sometimes when that tent is so big, then you lose coherency. You stand for nothing if you stand for everything. So for you to say how wonderful it is that we could just rub it in their faces, that our party is now objectively the party of faith, family values, and national defense, I mean, this tells me that you are a sycophant with no consistency at all. So if we nominated Mitt Romney going against Donald Trump, you'd still be proud of Democrats for that. Because, you know, Mitt Romney is objectively better on policy than Donald Trump, you would say, well, you know, this is our guy, so I have to defend him no matter what. And everything that he does is good by definition because he's on my team and my team is good. The other team is bad. Like, how far could we go down this rabbit hole? Like, if the Democratic Party just reversed their stance on marriage equality and they said, you know what, we're going to fight against marriage equality. Like, would you be in favor of that because, you know, all of a sudden now they're the party of family values? Like, you have to understand that if you stand for nothing then voters are going to see that, right? That's why Democrats are struggling to get their base enthused about Joe Biden because everything that he does stand for is what's wrong with society. This is the architect of the crime bill. He voted for the Iraq war. I just don't understand what the end game is here, right? Every single presidential election cycle, we see nothing but, you know, um blasting people who don't vote non-voters are apparently privileged and evil um we see people scolding anyone who dares to say they're going to vote for a third party but we don't ever see that type of you know anger directed at the democratic party itself the institution with the power like why doesn't marcos scold joe biden and democrats for not doing enough to appeal to those third party voters they like to berate why is it always the responsibility of, you know, the voters and not the politicians? Like, I mean, everything is backwards nowadays. Like, the voters are supposed to be the ones who should be there for politicians, who, you know, can't let down politicians. It's not the other way around. It's not that if Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden fails, possibly, that he's the one to blame because he's courting Republicans and ignoring the left-wing base and not trying to excite young people. You know, it's young people. They were the ones who failed Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton. It's just this type of loyalist behavior, this sycophantic, disgusting behavior is exactly why Democrats lose and why people hate them, young people. Because, of course, we don't support Republicans because they're insane. But, you know, the way to appeal to young people who are, you know, disillusioned with the Democratic Party, is not to be more like Republicans. I shouldn't have to say this, that, you know, Democrats becoming the Republican Party of the late 90s and 2000s is a bad thing, but apparently here we are. Trump is bad, so because he's so bad, every other Republican is good so long as they're anti-Trump. Anything that Trump might be against... Well, by definition, um, that's something we have to embrace. So if Donald Trump says, I support trans rights because he said it, it's bad all of a sudden because we stand for nothing. We're just anti-Trump. And if the party wants to take us in that direction, I have to follow because I am loyal to the party until the end. I mean, Jesus Christ, like loyalty is a virtue that we all uh, appreciate, but there has to be a line. You have to have some standards and this dude has no standards. Otherwise, you wouldn't have sent thousands of roses to Nancy Pelosi, you absolute insufferable hack.